<laughs> We're in the cat in the back now. Yeah. That was real cat. <clears throat> <laughs> well, we're uh, it's we're here with uh, you know it's May what May nineteenth two thousand and something. I'm here with my, Wendy McClendon Covey of ABC's The Goldbergs, who plays the mother of all mothers, Beverly Goldberg. Um, let's, let's just talk about the recent awesome news. In in a rarity, you guys got picked up for two extra seasons. I mean, was that ever like in your mind that that's a, that was a possibility? You know, I. I knew that we got picked up for a fifth season because we had a start date and everything, but two at a time, that came out of nowhere. I was completely floored by that. And uh, yeah, we're lucky. We're very lucky to have well, job security for two more seasons. Yeah, that's a big one. So <laughs> job security. And I think that kind of means syndication coming up, right? We've already signed those deals. Oh. We've already filmed those promos. So we knew, you know, at the end of season four, yeah, that gives us 96 episodes. They're not going to just cut us off four episodes shy of syndication. So, yeah, listen, I I always thought I was just too weird to be on a network show. And, and here I am loving it. <laughs> well, speaking of... Um... Uh, well, maybe not even speak of Beverly has had quite the quite the year, um, mainly because all of her all of her babies are growing up right in front of her. Erica just graduated. Uh, you know, I, um, that cannot be have been easy to see that. I mean, we're in the midst of graduations right now, and I know, you know, I, I went. I've been to the set before, and I, I've seen how close you guys all are. So I imagine the emotion that you display with Beverly is probably pretty true to form as to what you're, what you're just you're feeling yourself. Yeah, it's it's pretty real. It's pretty real, and you know, it, it's so funny because yeah, we are in the middle of graduation season, and I remember um, not long ago, my my youngest sister graduated from high school and the sobbing that went on. I mean, the emotion, I sure don't remember anybody crying when I graduated. It was like, yes, you know, <laughs> hopefully she's leaving soon. I didn't, I stayed at home till way too late, but I, I get it. I, I see people just loving on their kids and being like, where did the time go? And that's how I feel with, my TV babies, because when I, when I was saying goodbye or not saying goodbye, but when I was getting emotional with them in the season finale, that was our last episode for the season. So I was in essence saying goodbye to them for the next four months. And, and I don't like being without them. I, I love our cast and I love our crew. And I, I, I feel lost when I don't get to see them every day. So I believe it. I mean, the last time we spoke, you were almost in tears because you were in hiatus and you're like, I want to go back so bad and see everybody. Yeah. It just yeah. seems like such like, it, it, I mean, and it, and it shows when you're watching the show how close you guys are because it's like a real family. It's, it's an, an incredible cast you guys have. Thank you. I, I appreciate you saying that. And I'm, I'm glad that comes across because I, we, we lucked out so much. You hear these horror stories of, you know, different shows and one person won't talk to the other person and one person won't leave their trailer until someone is away from the craft service table or whatever. We are not like that. I love those people. So. Well, and those people include, I mean, pros like Jeff Carlin and of course the legendary George Siegel who just yes. got his star on the Holly Walk of Fame. That but was emotional. That was an emotional day. I have to tell you. Watching George Siegel at 83 get his star on the Walk of Fame. That was so fantastic. Tears. I know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he, he deserves so much more. The guy is incredible. Yeah. Um, and also you have probably some of the, if not the, the best working child actors, kid actors, you could say, on television. I mean, this year, you know, Haley Orientia was amazing, and and, and so was uh, Sean Giambrone, and, and Tony Gentile has just been awesome since we first saw him. I mean, yeah. do you ever, you guys are all so seasoned, you've done this for a while, do you ever sit back and just like in amazement that they're able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the pros? 
always, always. Because when I was their age, I, I wouldn't have had the confidence to even show up. I would, I would be shaking all the time, but they are such pros and have so much natural ability. And that's something you can't teach. You know, this is truly Haley Arantia's first acting gig ever. And she's like my sparring partner. I know when I've got a scene with her, it's going to be quick. It's going to be efficient. It's going to be funny. And she's going to bring it. It's, it's, I, I adore working with her. Troy Gentile, um, he's like a machine. And he can recreate his takes exactly, no matter how many times we have to do it. And as you've seen this season, he does a lot of physical stuff. But he, he is word perfect every time. It's so fantastic. And, and Sean, are just, it's so hard not to just reach over and bite him in the face just while he's talking. I don't do that. <laughs> I want to. <laughs> but he's great. I, we really are lucky. We really are lucky. And, and especially, I mean, we are, we are lucky as well because especially, I mean, not to get political, but right now we need all the laughs that we can get. And it just seems like that's what you guys are providing. And a lot of it is because of that cast chemistry. Can you um, just tell us a bit about how strong that bond is and how important it is for you guys to, uh, you know, as, as a comedy series to um, make everybody else around you now happy and laughing, especially um, with what's going on. Yeah, I think that you bring up a good point. I think the climate right now, um, when people turn on their TVs, they wanna be entertained and they want to escape. And so, you know, I think our show is good for that because we don't get political. Not that we, you know, not that our show doesn't have any edge, but it's like, let's just go back in time for a little bit to a time when things were simpler. Let's just laugh. Let's all sit on the couch together as a family and watch this show. And that's something that I enjoy hearing from fans is that, you know, they look forward to doing it. They, it's something their whole families can watch together. And there's not that many shows that you can do that with. And, um, and so for us, when I, you know, I, I gush about my co-stars and I gush about our crew and blah, blah, blah. But um, I, I think you can feel when it's not genuine. When you watch shows where you, you can tell when the cast doesn't really gel and it, and all their um, emotional lines maybe seem, have like a false element to them. And I, I, I really think that we don't do that. I, I really do think that, well, look, this is my wish for everybody, that when you watch the Goldbergs, that little cartoon hearts come out of your screen. <laughs> Go into your heart. I don't know. Does that make sense? Did, did, did it, I it, 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 it totally does. And it, and it also helps that, like, you guys actually transfer us to a completely different time period. I mean, we're in the 80s at that point, so everything just feels that much better. <laughs> um, now, let's talk a little bit about uh, your pal Goldilocks405, who yes. Twitter, that's Twitter handle, is the real Beverly Goldberg. Do you ever go onto her feed for any kind of inspiration? Because, I mean, she's got everything there true to form. I mean, she's got, you know, praise for Adam. She's got uh, recipes, and she's just funny. I mean, yeah. do you go on there and steal anything from that? I, I, don't, I don't need to. Um, our writers might. But her feed is just a constant gift that keeps giving. And whenever I see that she's saying, Adam, call your mother. What do I have to do, Adam? It, I find it so funny that everybody piles on and pretty soon Adam Goldberg is getting all these messages about call your mother and all this. I know that must be such a pain in the butt for him, but I love watching it. I just think it's so funny. And I love it when Bev comes to visit because she always brings goodies. She I bet they're awesome. Some kind of, you know, giant chocolate brick of something she baked and it's always like, yes, Bev is here. She's a fun <laughs> one. <laughs> well, and speaking of, of fun, I mean, you have, it seems like you have a lot of fun playing for at a recent Contenders event. 
you came out on stage to Emmy voters as Beverly Goldberg in character. Yeah. And, and I was there, I was there from like seven in the morning when it started until six at night when it ended, watching all those panels, and it's still the one that I remember the most because it was so funny. Was it your idea or Rachel's, your publicist? How did that come about? It was not my idea. We wanted to do something memorable, and I was the only one that could actually do the panel. So one person does not a panel make. So they said, well, how are we going to, how are we going to, um, make this memorable and my my publicist did come up with the the uh idea to to do it in character and again i felt a little weird you know walking in walking backstage with all these people and all the other actors are dressed in their gorgeous outfits and i've got on my jumpsuit and wig and whatever but i I think it went well. I mean, it seemed funny. We were getting laughs. And I did think about that, like having to sit and watch all those panels all day long on a Sunday. Oh yeah. my God. That sounds torturous. Yeah. So at least, at least we were, you know, at least it was a memorable interview. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, if it was, it's great. If, if it'll make a difference in any way, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, for, for that that performance, you have um, you know you have two Critics' Choice nominations consecutive that you received, um, and in a perfect world, you know the Emmys are coming up, and that there there are two open slots in the lead actress category or lead actress comedy. If you're nominated in there, do you have a particular episode this season that you would submit? Because you had a lot. I was trying to think of one. There was a lot to pick from. See, I don't know which one I would submit. Maybe the season finale. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'd have to. I'd have to hear from other from fans because I don't know. I can't look. I can't look objectively at it. And I'm I'm really campaigning for the show as a whole. Um. So yeah, I would I would have to get feedback from from fans because I have no idea. I have no idea. And quite honestly. <laughs> I don't even remember it now. <laughs> it all goes by so fast. I, I don't know. Well, you had, you had that awesome episode, Snow Day, where it was about Erica's college application. You guys were battling. That was really great. You had uh, He's So Swayze, It's Crazy, where you were defending Adam for being the most <laughs> handsome <laughs> Patrick Swayze in the world. There's yeah. some good stuff. That's funny because, because Beverly really did do that. Uh, with with that agent played by Susie Essman. Um, there really was an agent in Philadelphia in the Philly area named Edie Robb. And, um, but, but Bev's thing was that, no, he's Tom Cruise. This, uh, my baby is the Jewish Tom Cruise. And, uh, <laughs> and all Edie wanted to put him out for was, you know, nerd roles. <laughs> So yeah, that really did happen. I don't know. Um, thank you for saying that. I forgot about those. I forgot about those. Um, yeah, I, someone's got to give me direction on that because I don't know. And then, and then you say there's two spots open. Yeah. It's just it's so funny because like, so are they already pre-nominated? Like, the Emmys well, are such a mystery to me. I don't know. They are. I mean, you know, you always you always think of. Uh, of their return, they're going to be a returning the returning people that they've had previously. I mean, it's not a guarantee. No, no. When honestly, you're, they keep nominating the same people over and over. Again. Right. So you kind of go with the same pattern, and then you have two two folks that are gone. So at least two open slots. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, there's a chance that it could no. be completely different, but I'm pretty yeah, sure like really, Julie Dreyfus will be back in. Of course she will. Of course she will. Veep is fantastic. She's great in it. But it yeah that it's all um. It's all so weird. It's it's all so weird. Like I I'm just so thrilled that I get to make a living doing this, you know, and uh, so to think of more secrets on top of that, it's like it's so weird. I don't know. And but I will say this: we do 24 episodes in a season, and a lot of these shows that do keep getting nominated in comedy and drama. 
um, do maybe 10 to 15 episodes or, you know, eight, like in the case of um, uh, Big Little Lies. And you know that's going to sweep this year. But they only did eight episodes. And, and you know, there are other series that, that do so many more. And, you know, I just hope voters take that into consideration. Like, you know, don't, don't give network shows the short shrift. It's very hard to keep up that kind of quality for 24 episodes. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty big proponent of that um, on, on the Gold Derby side because it's uh, what, what you guys have to do is so grueling. And then you've got shows that, I mean, the cutoff is six. If you do six episodes, you can be a contender for drama or comedy series. So okay. some shows do six. Some do six. Ten. Yeah, usually ten. And it's like you better be absolutely perfect in those in order to get the consideration that that all these other shows that are doing 24 because i could i could rattle off 20 episodes of the gold Dork that are better than 10 episodes of something else that i've seen that only does 10 episodes and that's where i think it's just you hear that out. everybody you hear that <laughs> <laughs> he's saying it i am i'm saying it i'm saying it i, I i'm not shy about saying it um one thing i do uh, you know, before we get into any fan questions, I, I wanted to know, um, I know you were in, in D.C. recently for uh, the hashtag right to bear arts um, yes. on Capitol Hill mm -hmm. advocacy day. And I went to an arts high school, so it's it's really important for me to keep the arts, uh, you know, going and, and people going to shows and going to concerts and everything else. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what you're doing and, and what, um, you know, the coalition itself does? Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I went uh, to lobby on Capitol Hill with the Creative Coalition, and what the Creative Coalition does is keeps the National Endowment for the Arts funded. And, um, you know, this year, um, the guy in the White House, who I shan't be naming right now, uh, said he was going to just cut all funding for it. Um, well, luckily, you can't just do that. <laughs> You know, you can't, and uh, among other things like the National Institute of Health and all these other things, he was just like, we're cutting, we're slashing, blah, blah, blah. So it's important for everyone to understand what the National Endowment for the Arts does. They aren't going around funding people to be actors, okay? Um, what they do is they give seed money to community organizations that are involved in the arts whether that is um, putting together a folklore or like a folk art exhibit in the Appalachias or, you know, giving seed money to fund an orchestra, a civic orchestra in another city or whatever, um, or the brilliant PTSD program they have at Walter Reed, which is an arts-based therapy program. They, all they do is give seed money. So, a lot of organizations that depend on the National Endowment for the Arts, what they're depending on is not for a fully funded, you know, grant that, you know, the NEA just pays for everything they do. The NEA gives you a little bit of money and then that stamp of approval makes you, uh, makes it easier to get money from other sources. That's a very important stamp of approval. So, um, you know, back in the 90s, thanks to Newt Gingrich, the National Endowment for the Art, Arts was slashed considerably, and we've never gotten back up to those numbers. What we're trying to do is rebuild, try to get back up to those numbers, and um, and you know at least hold steady, at least not decrease anymore. Uh, so we went to Capitol Hill. Luckily, this is a nonpartisan issue, and Republicans and Democrats all understand the value of the arts. Every dollar spent on the arts in a community yields $9 back to that community in ancillary businesses and what have you. So it's really an investment. Again, seed money. It's not like, oh, taxpayers are paying for people to, you know, paint pictures that no one understands. That's not what it's about. So uh, we did that. We had a really good response and we're actually holding steady this year. We, we 
got what we needed for the year. And it was, it was a very successful trip. And so uh, other than that, what I'm doing, I'm going to see shows. I'm trying to go see, you know, my husband and I will take each other on artist dates and, you know, we'll try to just see whatever obscure thing is going on. Cause it, at the end of the day, the way you really support arts is by uh, buying tickets and, and going yeah. and seeing these, seeing these exhibits, these shows and Instagramming the hell out of them and getting the word out. That's, that's the, the best way you can support the arts is by being an audience member. That's great. I mean, and, and like I said, it's a great cause and, um, you know, thanks for all that you're doing there. Um, it's my pleasure. Now we'll go to, uh, we'll wrap up with a few fan questions uh, from, from Gold Derby, from Facebook, and from Twitter. Uh, so we've only got a few, though. Um, Any Demon 102 wants to know, is there a particular 80 theme film or show that you'd love for the Gold Derbs to play off of in that Gold Derbs? I am dying to do a vacation episode. So like National Lampoon's Vacation, where they drive across country. I think... I, I want to see the Goldbergs get stuck in a car with each other in that station wagon for a week. <laughs> I, I'm sure going on vacation with them is just miserable. Or they get stuck on a cruise ship where something goes terribly wrong. I don't know. I, I just want to see them go on vacation. I would also like to go on vacation. So if it was the Goldbergs in France, <laughs> I, I would really make the sacrifice and and do that would it be Lay goldbergs at that point what's that Le goldbergs <laughs> and you know we are on in france and i wonder if phrases like delicious little snuggle muffin if they can translate that <laughs> or what they say you know <laughs> <laughs> um KDB wants to know, do you ever watch any of the home videos the real Adam Goldberg has before you film an episode? Never. Not once. So we're watching it right along with the audience. Like I have, I, I haven't seen any of these things before the audience sees them and I love them. And I wish I could just get a bunch of popcorn, find myself a VCR and watch all of his home movies that would be so entertaining for me that that should be its own streaming channel is just the Goldbergs home movies because they're well, insane. You said he has like hundreds, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Walls and walls of videotapes. And you know, the, the hard thing for him is getting people who never thought they would be on television to sign off on these, on these clips. So that's some, sometimes a detriment, uh -huh. you know, but most of the time, people do sign up. Well, that's good, because yeah. it makes for, for a great show. Um, Billy says, Wendy, you are my favorite person. And then she asks, what is your favorite thing about playing Beverly, and do you two share any qualities? Um, thank you, first of all. And I, my favorite thing about it is um, I love that, that uh, false bravado that she carries through the world. Like I'm right and I'm here to solve everyone's problems. And uh, you know, you're wrong, I'm right. Give me what I want and um, don't look at my kids sideways. Like I, I just love that, that strength she has. Um, the only thing we have in common is that when I love somebody i gush over them um not too embarrassingly i don't think but uh that that's probably the only thing that's probably the only thing but she i mean she loves being a mother and i never saw myself as a mother in real life like i've you know that's why i never had kids i never i never had that calling well you you did just say a little while ago that you wanted to uh bite sean's face off I do want to bite his face off, but I don't. There, yeah. Beverly would. Good point. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, final question: Gabrielle wants to know, what do you think is Beverly's favorite TV show in the '80s? In the '80s, you know, I bet Beverly loved a nighttime drama like Dynasty or Falcon Crest 
or Fantasy Island. I, I bet she loved things like that, just for the fashions, you know? Well, I was thinking from the sweater point of view, the Golden Girls, because didn't they wear a lot of sweaters? <laughs> that's true. But I mean, everybody loves the Golden Girls. That's, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is well, um, thank you again for joining us and congratulations on the next two upcoming seasons of the Goldbergs. And hopefully in July, there'll be an, an even bigger congratulations because you richly deserve it. Oh, so thanks for your time. Thank you so much for saying that. And thanks for talking to me.